Hello, I'm Richard Hooper and this is SAT TV Week. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Alexander Muller-Gastel, CEO of NDSATCOM. Alexander, thank you for joining me. We're here at your factory event and we've heard your impassioned speech about how it's the people, the teams that make the success of the company. But how do you keep them motivated? Well, I think in the end, people obviously want to know that they have a secure job in the future. Right now, how do you how do you go about that? And uh, I was telling uh, earlier that it's on the one hand, it's about telling people what that strategy looks like for the future, but also just valuing the inputs, valuing the inputs from people that have been with the company for a long time, but people value also the input from new blood coming in. And I think that's where the company has moved in the right direction over the last years, where we've been able to acquire new talents to put some new ideas into our shop, but also using experience from people that have been doing this job for a long time to reference some of those experiences from the past and then mix that together and really give the people a vision of what the company is going to be like going forward. And last but not least, also have events like these where people realize from people coming from the outside that this is a great company because sometimes you're so caught up in your own world that you don't get a chance to really pause and look back and reflect and having feedback from employees, from other people from the outside on your company helps you also to grow. Now, it's not just about staff. It's not just about teams. You've got to take a lot of credit. You can't take a blanket approach. You are targeting specific sectors. Just tell me a little bit more about that. For us as a middle-sized company, using our resources to the best available efficiency and focus is really one of the keys, right? So you not only have to ask yourself the questions, where do you want to be in the game, but also where you step away from certain things, just to be focused. And the focus that we have developed over the years, and we, I mean as a team, right? Because in the end, we can only make it happen as a team, is to really say we are at home in certain verticals, in certain regions. We focus on these. We make sure that the customers and the partners that are there, we service and we deliver on our promises. And we don't try to conquer the world to make sure that again, people also know who they are talking to and who can they from the outside talk to us about issues and just be focused. Now, I've been traveling for the last two weeks and I've been speaking to a lot of people in the satellite industry. There's one particular name that keeps on coming up as a big disruptor in the market. And we know who we're talking mm -hmm. about. How does ND Satcom view that? when it's approaching the market and delivering products? As in all new trends that are coming up, unfortunately, what I would perceive is that the industry has been able to acquire new trends over the last years. I think way back in the past, a few years ago, we were living in our own little shell. Now, these actors are coming on and, and they are disrupting, they are making a difference. And you always have to look at your own company and what does it mean to us and how do we make sure that we don't miss a trend, but we first evaluate a trend before we just jump into the water and, and see if we can swim with it, All right? So when we're looking at you know new constellations, new potential adjacent products that can benefit us, I would say that we have a USP in-house where we have our own development department, our own product, project management, product management, to take the time to, do, to, to really evaluate and see what it means and then come up with the right business case, potentially, if it's something we want to go after, and make sure we follow that. And then obviously always make sure that the customer or the partner is in line. And if we then commit this to a timeline or something, uh, 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 um, uh, parallel to that, we also deliver on it. Now, you've had great success. You're driving the business forward. There's always challenges on the horizon. Mm -hmm. 
but how do you view it moving forward? How can you continue to be successful? Hmm. Well, first of all, I think that's why we get up in the morning is to be successful, right? That's what drives every one of us. And obviously when you've had a track record over the last years where you've proven to yourself and you know, to your investors and everything that you can be successful, you want to build on that. So I think it's an evolution, not a revolution that we're, we're con continuing on. How do, we, how do we make sure that we're successful? Well, I think in the end, it's just making sure that we have the right customers, the right partners to be able to deliver on our products and having continuing the commitment from our employees. I mentioned this in my, in my previous uh, opening. I, I, I cited the example of COVID when people, even in the uncertain times, were still committed to the company coming to work, not really knowing what the environment is like. And that's the commitment that makes a difference. And yes, we will have people leaving us for different jobs. Yes, we will have new people coming in, but the core of the company is not going to dramatically change over the next years. And same with our direction and the strategic direction still holds true today as it will, I would attain in the next two to three years. What will happen in three to five years? Who knows, right? But that's what we're after, success. Alexander, thank you for talking to me. Thank you very much, Richard. Appreciate it.